So they said to me, what are you going to call the show? I said, what do you mean? They said, we've well, got to call the show something. You know, every, all the comedians and they name their shows, they name their tours now. And I said, what, like an album? They said, yeah, it's like, you know, like a band names an album, a comedian names his tour. So I said, well, what about Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club? What do you think of that? And they said, well, that could cause major legal problems. It's not very original either, is it, Sean? Either someone else has done that. And I went, yes, you know, I was just being silly. And uh, I thought about it. I thought, well, let's well, have a name. I mean, the old comics, they didn't have names. Tom O'Connor, he didn't have names for his shows, did he? It was just Tom O'Connor. It wasn't like, come and see Tom O'Connor in Scouse Tangle or something like that, was it? It was just, it was just him. So then I came up with this idea, a brilliant idea. One day I had a flash. I was going to call it Spot the Difference. And the idea was, was that I'd have these posters and two pictures of me on, right, and there'd just be very subtle differences. Like in one, I was in a slightly worse mood. You know, I might have a bit of gravy on myself. And I thought people would walk past the poster, they'd see the two pictures, because I love Spot the Difference. Everyone loves Spot the Difference. You can't help yourself, can you? You know, like... You know, Mariah Carey's handbag, you know, there's like a buckle missing. What pleasure that gives you. And I thought people would stop in the street, see my poster, and go, oh, I'll spot the difference. And they start playing Spot the Difference. And then small crowds would gather. And they'd go, what are you doing? You know, we're playing Spot the Difference. Oh, and Sean Locke's playing. And that's, that would just get bigger and spill out onto the streets. The police would come and they'd say, come on, people, move on. And they'd have to take my posters down. A bit of a publicity coup. You know, the council would say, you're affecting the commerce of our town. And I thought it was a great idea. And then I realised... That's not a great idea, because nobody would play Spot the Difference, would they? Nobody would play that. What would happen is people would come to the show expecting to see twins. they go, where's the other one? It would be a disaster. And so I went away and I was thinking, oh, what am I going to call it? What am I going to call it? And then I came up with this other idea, you know, based on a film rather than albums. I thought, what about Sean Locke and two smoking squirrels? You know, it's funny, see, that's funny, isn't it? You can't argue with that. And on the side of the stage, I've got two squirrels, and they're sort of in harnesses, so you know, they can't really move, can't get away. And I have like one of those wheels they have in beagle units, and the squirrels are smoke. After every big laugh, the squirrels have a little puff on a cigarette. I'd be everyone would enjoy that. Who wouldn't? And they said, well, you can't do that, Sean, for lots of reasons, but mainly you're not allowed to smoke indoors anymore in this country. Haven't you heard? And I said, yeah, right. So then I thought, well, what about put them in a perspex box so they're sealed in and call it Sean Lock and two choking squirrels? And every time I get a really big laugh, I've got this foot pump, and I pump some smoke into the box, and you can hear the squirrels going, <coughs> I said, that's funny, come on. And they said, no, it's wrong on so many levels. In the end, I had this entirely original idea. I'm going to call my show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage, Sean Locke. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Thanks very much. Fantastic. Fantastic welcome. And we got a clangor in. Brilliant. That's a great step. <laughs> Thank you. No, lovely. Thank you. Um, wonderful to be here. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here tonight. Really am, you know. I know it doesn't sound like it, but I do mean it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I know. I've got, I've got one of those voices. It doesn't matter how upbeat, positive I try to be, it always sounds like I'm taking the piss. <laughs> It is. A friend of mine the other day said he was going on holiday in Wales. I said, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yes, it bloody will. <laughs> I don't get birthday presents anymore, because I can't do a convincing thank you. Yeah. I stopped saying it altogether. I thought it'd be better if I just went, wow. <laughs> in my mouth, the words I love you sound more like, happy now? <laughs> will that do? Can I go? Yeah. <laughs> I am getting a lot better at it, though, because I've got young children and I have to lie about paintings a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not bad, that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up. Because <laughs> their paintings are so shit. <laughs> That's as enthusiastic as I can get, yeah? A tiger, if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a van, couldn't it? <laughs> we'll never know. I can keep it. Yippee. <laughs> I'll put it on the pile. I don't do adverts. You'll never see me in an advert. Never do any adverts or voiceovers. Not out of any high-minded principle. It's just if you do an advert, you've got to sound like you mean it. <laughs> and if I was to do, like, the Morrison's ad, yeah, get yourself down to Morrison's. 
It sounds like I've been held hostage, doesn't it? <laughs> Get yourself down to Morrison's, or they're going to cut my ears off. <laughs> That's actually not strictly true. I have done one advert, did it recently, actually. It's for Longleat, you know the safari park? Longleat Safari Park. Do this. It's more of an information film, actually, you know? Because I don't know if you know, there's got this problem at Longleat with people speeding in the safari park. Yeah, got this problem there. Yeah. What happens is people are driving through the park, they forget they've paid in, they see a lion and they shit themselves. <laughs> Fucking lion! <laughs> There's floral tributes over all the trees. You know? <laughs> Simba. <laughs> so they got me to do a sort of a, a little ad to, to educate people. And I kept my dignity. I was in, I was in a monkey costume. <laughs> and it goes like this. Very simple. It goes like this. It goes. Hoo, 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 ha, ha, ha. If you hit me at 40. Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> There's an 80% chance I'll die. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. But if you hit me at 30, ooh, 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 ha, 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 ha. there's an 80% chance I'll live. But they'll probably put me down anyway, so you might as well drive at 50. <laughs> A few monkey noises to start. And thank you, thank you for that fantastic welcome. And uh, wow, it's great, you know. And uh, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for coming out to come and see my show, Sean Locke. I'm a comedian. Shouldn't have to point it out, really, should I? Yeah. Yeah. Some people get a bit confused, though. They don't, you know, they go, they go, why does he make such a fuss at the end of every sentence? Yeah. What does he want? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a catchphrase as well, like most comedians these days, got a catchphrase, yeah. I never use it, but... Uh... <laughs> That's my catchphrase. I never use it. <laughs> I've got one of those George Foreman grills. I never use it. <laughs> I've got an appendix. I never use it. <laughs> Jim Davison's phone number. <laughs> also, I've other problems. I've just been bad for my local pub as well. You know, it's got bad for my pub because I went in the wrong toilet. <laughs> not my fault. Not my fault at all. No. What the pub's done, right? What they've done. You know, some pubs they try to be a bit light-hearted with the toilets. Have a bit of a laugh with a toilet, you know. Pub's called the White Heart, right? Instead of ladies and gents, they've got two pictures of a deer up. Underneath, it says Heinz and Bucks. And when I went up there, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I thought, am I a hind or a buck? <laughs> you don't really need that when you're busting for a piss, do you? <laughs> a quiz. <laughs> I just want to go toilet. <laughs> well, I feel like a buck. I feel like a buck. Okay. But it could be buck me, couldn't it? Buck <laughs> me. <laughs> Some people are not comfortable with that image, I know. <laughs> Maybe I'm a hind, a bit of a bastard. Ooh, he's a hind. Ooh. Yeah. I notice they don't do it in the disabled toilets. No. no. <laughs> they get off scot free. <laughs> Ever got a picture of a deer with an antler like that? <laughs> yeah? Just straight in, straight out, knee bother. <laughs> the worst ones are the swan based pubs, aren't they? God, dear. then you've got two pictures of a swan up. Underneath, it says cobs and pens. I have the foggiest idea. <laughs> I'll stare at the picture looking for a clue. <laughs> Breasts or a penis, anything. <laughs> a thicker forewing, come on. <laughs> I didn't want to burst in in case it was a swan's toilet. You know how bad-tempered they can be. <laughs> you upset one having a piss, he'll break both your arms. <laughs> In the end, I had to go to the bar and ask the barmaid. It was humiliating. I said, excuse me, am I, uh, am I a cob or a pen? <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I'm Polish. <laughs> and it turns out I'm a cob. I'm a cob. Man's a cob. Lay's a pen. That's how you work it out. Man's a cob. So we've learned something. It's marvellous, isn't it? So it would be, be cob, pen, pen, cob. Cob, pen, pen, cob. Sorry, I was just taking a breath, sir. There's no hesitation whatsoever. <laughs> cob, pen, cob, pen, cob. Mm, don't know. Lovely there. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to do all of you. <laughs> That'd be quite a disappointing night out, wouldn't it? <laughs> the end of the night, I was up the top there going, and cob. I don't, think, I don't think this is important, really, in the swan world. You know, people talk about the difference between men and women. I think swans are pretty much the same, you know. They're both moody bastards. 
I'd have it swans are going around going, pens, eh? What are they like? God, <laughs> can't live with them, can't live without them. <laughs> I came home the other day, Ness was just how I left it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, that noise, isn't it? That's got to be my favourite of all the animal noises, yeah, the swan. But they don't teach you to when you're little, do they? <laughs> you know, when you're in nursery school and you learn all the animal noises, they don't teach you to, do they? You know, the cow goes moo, very good, very good, yeah. Pig goes oink, very good. And the swan goes... <laughs> He's had an accident, I think. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like I say, I'm banned from a pub. Not that bothered about it, though, because since the smoking ban, you know, I mean, it's, there's no joy or pleasure to be had in a pub anymore for me. <laughs> I'm so pissed off about it. Still, really pissed off about it. Because that was my main thing in life, was having a pint and a cigarette. You know? When I say main thing, another way of looking at it is all I've got. Because <laughs> I realise now, I don't go to the pub, I don't have any hobbies or interests, you know. My brother said, why don't you come fishing? I said, I want to do that. That's basically going dogging without the sex, isn't it? <laughs> Hours out in the open. You're bound to catch something, aren't you? <laughs> then there's the old dilemma. Kill them or let them go. <laughs> I am really pissed off about it. And I smoke roll-ups as well. I mean, they're virtually salad. Not... <laughs> I count them as part of my five fruit and veggie day. A couple of roll-ups, apple and some broccoli. <laughs> Fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Probably a lot better for you than those salads you get in McDonald's. I couldn't believe it when they started selling salads. Could you? I thought, it's just ridiculous. It's the last place on earth i go for a salad. McDonald's. I'd go to Pronta Print before I went there. <laughs> and I am, I'm really pissed off about it. The thing that really annoys me about it is, there's no... It's it, it's a final decision. There's no higher authority. They've just made a decision. You can never smoke in a pub again. There's, there's nowhere you can appeal to, you know? You know, if you've done a murder... I didn't mean that like we've all done one, but <laughs> you can go, look, come on, honestly, it wasn't me, you know, you can appeal. Well, that, this, there's no, you know. For a while, I was so pissed off about it, I was thinking about going to see The Wizard of Oz, see what he could do. That's how, <laughs> that's how I thought, well, I'll just go and see The Wizard of Oz, that's it, you know. I didn't go, because I'm not actually mental. You know. <laughs> I thought it'd be quite good to go and see him, have a contemporary new trip with modern problems to go and see. Like, why do you want to go? I can't get reception on my phone. <laughs> It'll sort it out. What about you? I've got ice cream headache. Hey! <laughs> what about you? I want to talk to the animals. Oh, Christ. You do know he's not a real wizard, don't you? <laughs> I was amazed at the end of that film. I was amazed at the end of that film. You know, it turns out he's not a wizard. You know, it turns out... I'm not spoiling it for anyone, am I? You know, he steps out, and it's basically, it's a midget with a loud hailer, isn't it? <laughs> In a green satin suit. Really, it's a jockey, isn't it? <laughs> and he goes, hmm, not a wizard. He doesn't even say sorry, does he? He goes, hmm, not a wizard. <laughs> I thought Dorothy and the other characters, they took that very well, didn't they? <laughs> you know, they went, oh, he's, he's not a wizard. Oh, God, dear. Oh. I'd have been furious. <laughs> what do you mean you're not a fucking wizard? <laughs> idea of the hassle we've had getting here tonight. It's been a nightmare. Listen, matey, if you're not a wizard, don't go round calling yourself the Wizard of Oz, cos it pisses people off. <laughs> you're not a wizard, you're a loser. <laughs> I don't think it'd be a great end to a Hollywood musical, to be fair. <laughs> Me punching a midget. <laughs> As you can see, I'm quite stressed about the whole thing. I am. I am. And people say to me, why don't you give up? I say, I don't want to. It's the end of that chat. <laughs> then they say, think of the money you'll save. I think, I'm not going to save any money, am I? Because I'm going to live longer. <laughs> oh, it's going to cost me a fortune, actually, isn't it? Jigsaws and conservatories. <laughs> 
<laughs> My advice, if you haven't got a good pension, keep smoking. Yeah? <laughs> you end up working at B&Q at 70, wandering around in an apron, getting bullied by a 21-year-old. Go and get the curtain hooks, Grandad. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> or if you haven't got a decent pension, like, you still have to try and enjoy your extra years, you know? Water skiing when you're 70, that's pathetic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And I'll be, I'll be wearing a thong. <laughs> yeah, you made me give up and live longer. It's payback time. <laughs> and my ass isn't great now. When I'm 70, I look like soggy tracing paper hanging down. <laughs> my balls will be like an executive toy. I'm just gonna go, you made me give up. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, a lot of people make the mistake when they get old, don't they? They try to recapture their youth. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna spoil other people's. That's my thing. <laughs> go up to couples on trendy beaches and go, excuse me, do you know where the toilets are? <laughs> oh, thanks very much. And then turn around really slowly, shaking like that. <laughs> Hope I make it. <laughs> I'm busted, you know. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I'm going to do to piss off young people, right? My car is going to have the best sound system you can possibly get. The whole car is me one big speaker, right? And I'm going to drive around listening to book tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up next to some kids, listen to their music, crank up the Inspector Lindley mysteries. <laughs> Dr. Galbraith! <laughs> Where were you on the night of the 14th? <laughs> Said Inspector Lindley. <laughs> Quietly! <laughs> it's a great yeah. idea, isn't it? I can't wait. Because I buy a lot of book tapes travelling up and down the country, and they're always read by the same people, aren't they? They're always read by very well-spoken people, you know, Martin Jarvis, Stephen Fry, Felicity Kendall. And I was thinking, it'd be nice to have a bit of variety in your book tape reading, wouldn't it? You know, have some other, other people reading books. Like, have some books read by, like, Peter Andre. <laughs> Peter Andre reads Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. <laughs> Not even reads. Peter Andre has a bash at. <laughs> Now, oh, Mr. Darcy, you seem to be a gentleman of impeccable. What the fuck's going on here? I mean, <laughs> hasn't even mentioned her tits yet. Or, <laughs> or Bez. You know, Bez doing some stuff. <laughs> Bez reads the mayor of Casterbridge with his maracas. <laughs> yeah. The hay trusser was exhausted after a long harvest, and then he just wanders off. <laughs> the rest of the tape's him opening cans. <laughs> They say, don't they, they say that political correctness has gone mad. And I think that might be true, actually, because uh, I was at the zoo the other day and I got told off and I said, look, there's a mongoose. <sighs> Can't say that anymore. No. <laughs> Special needs goose, that's what you're going to say. <laughs> it's gone mad, isn't it? It's gone mad. You know? I saw a puffer fish, I thought, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> There were some alternative punchlines to that joke, and I thought I stepped away from them. One of them I was a bit concerned about. I thought, oh, and I wasn't sure. I thought, oh, maybe it's racist. I'm not sure. And I didn't obviously didn't want it to be racist. I don't think I'm not I'm racist. I'm not racist. And if it turned out it was racist, I'd be a bit knackered, right? Because none of my best friends are black. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have no excuses. Because <laughs> I hate that. You know, people have been accused of racism. They always come out and go, oh, that Weasley excuse. No, oh, some of my best friends are black. Oh, it's horrible. Jay Goody did it on Big Brother, wasn't it? She was. She was racist, wasn't she? She wasn't very racist, didn't have an armband on. But, uh, <laughs> put it this way, she ain't gonna win a mobo, is she? <laughs> and she comes out and goes, uh, no, I'm not racist, some of my best friends are back. This is, oh, you know, people don't do it for other things, do they? I'm not a murderer, some of my best friends are alive. <laughs> I'm not a paedophile, some of my best friends are kids. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? No. <laughs> that makes things worse, doesn't it? <laughs> but political correctness is very interesting, isn't it? It's changed the world, hasn't it? You know, I was thinking, a lot of the songs we used to sing when I was a kid, 
You can't sing those anymore. You know, simple songs like, remember that one? Remember that one? When Johnny grows up, he'll be a soldier. When Jimmy grows up, he'll be a sailor. When Timmy grows up, he'll be a tailor. And all the girls will be wives, washing up and cooking dinner. Washing up and cooking dinner. Washing up and cooking dinner. Wives, wives, wives. <laughs> It seemed so innocent at the time, you know. <laughs> I didn't realise the sinister subtext at work. Really. Of course, they say, don't they, a woman's work is never done. And maybe that's why they get paid less. <laughs> Some quite beefy claps there, weren't there? <laughs> oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a bloody good idea, mate. That's a fact. <laughs> I thoroughly agree with that. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? You know, that's, I think that's outrageous that women get paid less if they do the same work. Don't they? And also, at meal times, you get slightly smaller portions than us, don't you? <laughs> you always get the little bit of chicken. <laughs> 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 but I suppose, if you look on the other side of the coin, your soap is a lot gentler on the skin. <laughs> <laughs> it swings and roundabouts, really, isn't it? And also, in your magazines, you get vouchers. We don't get vouchers in our magazines. No. So if you cash all those in, slightly better off. <laughs> now, obviously, I think equality is very important. It's something we should all strive for. I think in certain areas, it's gone too far the other way, though. I do. I know. You know. I mean, this isn't a very popular opinion. It's very unpopular, actually. Very unpopular opinion. But I think it's fundamentally wrong that the AA, the RAC, prioritise single women at night. I do. I think that's outrageous, you know. I could be broken down three or four hours. Woman breaks down, 100 yards up the road, van goes vroom, straight to her. I think that's an outrageous way to treat men. What do you think we are? Think we can just, like, fend off attackers all night long? <laughs> Biff! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about me. Whoa! <laughs> Why are you... I'd be on the phone, though. I'd be on the phone going, uh, would you come any quicker if I told you I was a transvestite at all? Would that <laughs> screw <That's laughs> things up? Are you a lot of salad? <laughs> I'm wearing those tanga briefs. A bit like knickers. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I don't think is quite fair, quite fair, right? How come, right, if I come home, sometimes I come home, my wife is wearing some of my clothes, right? Yeah. Sometimes she's got my shirt on. Or well, sometimes you've got my boxer shorts on. You, know, you don't say anything, do you? You don't mention it, yeah. But the other way round... <laughs> she comes home, I've slipped something on. <laughs> oh, we have to have a chat, don't we? <laughs> I'm supposed to feel ashamed. <laughs> I might need to see someone. <laughs> I'm only joking, that's, that's never happened. <laughs> never been caught. <sighs> What I do is very clever. I put loads of boxes on the stairs. So it uh, makes a right racket, gives you plenty of warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I say my wife, actually. We're not actually married. We're not married. We've been together a long time. 
quite a long time. A girlfriend doesn't seem significant a term to describe the relationship. You know. She doesn't like Lodger. She hates that. Um, <laughs> Cohabitee. Ooh, like you've both got something, isn't it? <laughs> Partner, like you're in business. Lover. Doesn't really describe our life together. <laughs> No, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I absolutely adore her. I'm quite happy standing up in public saying I absolutely adore whatever you're supposed to call her. Um, <laughs> I do it like it was her birthday the other day. I thought I'd do something special. So what I did was I got up really, really early, really early. Fucked off for the day. <laughs> she said it was the best birthday <laughs> she's ever had. Yeah. I got it right for it, because last year I got it wrong. I said, what do you want? She said, surprise me. So I phoned her from Morocco. <laughs> oh, oh, got it wrong again, didn't I? <laughs> it's always getting things wrong. I come back from the shops, it's all wrong. Because apparently there's a big difference between semi-skimmed and banana-flavoured milk. <laughs> That's just nitpicking. <laughs> and I made a bit of a boo-boo the other day, because, you know, sometimes women ask you what you're thinking, ask men what they're thinking. And I made the mistake, I told the truth. I thought I told her exactly what I was thinking. Big mistake. We just, we just made sex. And, um... <laughs> she said, Sean, what are you thinking? I said, well, I thought, I don't know. I said, oh, OK, well, I was just, uh, I was just trying to imagine a world with no herbs. <laughs> she said, what? I said, don't worry, it was fine, you know. Trains ran on time, everyone went to work, but some went missing, you know. <laughs> now, I think our relationship problems are similar to loads of others. I think, I think basically it's a man living with a woman. I, mean, I wouldn't want to live with a man, you know, you know. She often says to me, the trouble with you, Sean, is you're such a bloke. You're such a bloke? I said, I thought that was the idea. <laughs> she said, no, you never let me know how you feel. Not whether I'm hot, uncomfortable or hungry. I'm very good at that. Boiling here, love, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Window, good idea, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm parched. Any chance of a cat in there? <laughs> Not very good at that. No, she said, you never let me know how much you love me. And I thought about this. I thought, what's the best way to let someone know how much you love them? Is it with flowers or jewellery or a meal? Of course it's not, is it? The best way to let someone know how much you love them is with a pie chart. <laughs> Because that way, they know exactly. <laughs> Emotional precision. You know? Do it like it's a meeting. Would you like to come in? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get your tea, coffee or anything? OK, let's have a look at this year's chart. <laughs> I'll just flip it over here. There's the chart. That's the blue segment. That's my family. Stays pretty constant, yeah. Be quite a foxy lady to get into that bit, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yellow bit there, that's ice cream. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> but this big red bit here, that's you, yeah. Which is a 20% increase on last year. <laughs> well done. <laughs> that's a great idea, isn't it? Because also you can use it to dump someone, can't you? Because <laughs> you don't have to say anything, do you? You have to do anything, oh, it's not you, it's me, and all oh, the things need some time. You just point to the chart and go... <laughs> <laughs> what happened there, then? <laughs> you used to be all over that like a rash. <laughs> I'll check with the guys in graphics. <laughs> That's the end of that bit. <laughs> yeah. A lot of comics use the big line at the end of the routine. No, oh, don't do that. Put something in which makes people go, is it finished or not? <laughs> It's my signature. Yeah. Is it, it's poignant, some people call it, or it's just it's not as funny as it should be. <laughs> Do you know what really pisses me off? You know when you're on a plane and the hostess comes up to you and asks you to stop singing? Mm. <laughs> hey, hold on, you've been giving me free drinks for five hours. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? <laughs> Buffalo soldier! <laughs> I was thinking, actually, pretty much the only place you could have a cigarette indoors now, if you're on a plane and it was crashing, and everyone's going, ah, ah! 
I reckon I can have a crafty one here. <laughs> you know, ah, put that out, it's disgusting. <laughs> no, join in. I've actually had a near-death experience on a plane. It's a very strange experience to have, actually. You really find out something about yourself. You find out your true nature, really. You know, I was flying across the Atlantic, and there was a bit of a problem with one of the engines. Then the other engine failed. And basically, the plane is plummeting towards the ocean. And people were screaming and crying. There was sheer blind panic. But for some reason, I don't know why, I was very calm. I was, very cal I was a bit pissed off, they turned the film off. And I was sitting next to this little old lady. She was going to visit her son in America. And she was in a dreadful state. She had tears running down her face. Her arms were waving around. I thought, I'd better do something. So I managed to catch her frail hand. I brought it down to the armrest. And I turned to her and I said, Fuck you, old lady! <laughs> we're going to die! <laughs> Woo-wee! <laughs> Let's meet Jesus! <laughs> Do you want to swap clothes? <laughs> Look crazy in the wreckage. <laughs> I said, do you want to swap clothes? It's a bit of a lie. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> anyway, fortunately, the pilot managed to restart the engines. She asked to be moved. <laughs> Everyone got a free drink, except me. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't even put the film back on. It was another year before I found out that Kaiser Soze was the bloke with a limp. <laughs> That's two films ruined. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting told off? Seems to get told off a lot, don't we? You shouldn't get told off at all. Really, you know? Everywhere I go, there's people in different coloured vests, stewards, just going, don't do that, put that down. Oi, stop it. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. When I was lucky enough, I went to the first cup final last year at the New Wembley. Went to the first cup final. And uh, I was really shocked, right, because they'd created their own level of stewards just for Wembley. They had these guys wandering around in these silver nylon fluorescent vests, right, and on the back it said, Response Squad. <laughs> at first I thought it was a boy band, right? <laughs> And I went up to one of these guys, these, I don't know, there's some new level of security, come somewhere between policeman and road sweeper. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I went up to one of these deluded lollipop men, and <laughs> I wanted to ask what it was about. And the guy was South African, which is a real surprise. Yeah? I didn't know they liked telling people what to do. And <laughs> I said, response squad, I said, what's that about? And he said, we're here to deal with misbehaviour. Like it was really serious, and I said, uh, I said, well, what, what, what counts as misbehaviour? What do you, how do you identify misbehaviour? And this is exactly what he said, right? He said, people acting like twats. <laughs> I thought, oh, he's been on a course, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking, it's a good job I'm not in the response squad. There'd be nobody in the fucking stadium. <laughs> 25,000 United fans, they'd be out for a start. <laughs> all the players, they're all twats now, aren't they? Total twats. Referee, linesman, Duchess of Kent, she can fuck off. <laughs> There's a big corporate ring all the way round. Anyone who has a starter before a football match, get out! <laughs> Anyone who negotiates rocket before kickoff can get the fuck off. <laughs> Anyone who paints their face, what's that about? <laughs> it's a football match, not Braveheart. <laughs> Anyone? Where's the player's name on their shirt? No. Shevchenko, you're from Dorset. What's the matter with you? <laughs> all my mates, they're all twats. Total twats. Me, but I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> St John's Ambulance. <laughs> I, know, I know they do a wonderful job. I know they do. But who doesn't look at them and go, twat? <laughs> it's wrong. It's totally wrong. <laughs> Giving up your afternoons. But I was thinking, what's going to happen when Robbie Williams plays there? He's not going to get in the borough, is he? <laughs> Biggest twat on the planet, that man, isn't he? He's always walking around with his shirt off, isn't he? Like this. What's, what's the matter with you? You're a pop star, not a scaffolder. <laughs> If he could, he'd stick his cock in all our faces. He really would. <laughs> you, and then you, and then you, and you, you. He would. It's not 
because I'm prudish. Yeah. It's not because I think, oh, a gentleman should always wear a shirt when he's serenading the ladies. <laughs> if you went to a party, right, and there was a bloke wandering around with his shirt off like this. <laughs> You wouldn't go, oh, wow, I, ca I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> no, you'd think, uh-oh, the world wanker champion has arrived. <laughs> He's just beaten Chris de Burr in the final. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's because, like, Maybe it's because, like, you know, he's got, he's got tattoos on his back and if he didn't take his shirt off, then we'd never get to see them. <laughs> well, sometimes he wears a scarf, doesn't he? God, he's got, walking out there, he's got a scarf on. You just want to go... <laughs> you know, someone who's got no shirt and a scarf suggests to me they spend a little too long getting dressed. Yeah. <laughs> tucking it in, tucking it out, tucking... No, oh, I don't care. Just, uh... Ooh, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> And you think with all his money, he could afford a really nice shirt, wouldn't you? <laughs> Loads of pockets. <laughs> Maybe he's using the wrong fabric softener. That's actually probably the reason. He puts it on and he goes, ooh, it's all itchy. <laughs> probably, cap full of Febreze, turns out he's a great bloke. <laughs> you don't get punchlines like that every day, do you? <laughs> I don't get a lot of stuff nicked. But I really enjoyed touring around the country. One of the things I've been quite interested in asking audiences as I travel around is in different towns and cities is, is about the environmental question. You know, it's about global warming, climate change. Is that something people here, people here in London, is that something you're concerned about? Do you know? <laughs> All right, so some quite strong yeses, a few... No! <laughs> no! I'm just interested. I'm interested in why some people care and other people couldn't give a shit. Some people, quite happily, they'd fly to the shops, wouldn't they? If he's ejected, I will fly you to the shops deal. <laughs> Brilliant, I'm in. Yeah. I can bring back more patio heaters. <laughs> so the cat's nice and warm in the garden. <laughs> While their neighbours could be shivering, you know, drinking puddle water, <laughs> chucking a sausage backwards and forwards, trying to heat it up. <laughs> Because some people really care, don't they? Some people, every single piece of environmental news mortifies them, like the ice caps are melting, <laughs> sea levels are rising, <laughs> the samba button on a Yamaha organ uses ten times more energy than any other rhythm. And I care, I do care. You know, as much as I used to, I went to America, and when I came back, I thought, what's the fucking point? <laughs> Why do I bother? <laughs> you do. You, you do, you go there, you go there, you think, this is wasted party time. I mean, we have big cars over here. Cars in America are enormous. You know, the average car is like a bungalow with a windscreen. <laughs> The consumption is so much more extreme than ours. You know, okay, but I just feel stupid. I'm at home, right? I'm, I'm recycling, washing out marmite pots. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I must get all the marmite out <laughs> so they don't have to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> and they're drilling for oil in Alaska, <laughs> mopping it up with a seal pup. Like that. <laughs> I just feel stupid. I feel like I've turned up at an earthquake with a dustpan and brush. <laughs> can, I, can I help at all? Will that do anything? I'll tell you what, I'll do this little bit here. <laughs> and you can do all that. <laughs> In a way, in a way, it's a bit like a fancy dress party, isn't it? You know, you know if you get invited to a fancy dress party, there's always a thought in the back of your mind, isn't it? Uh, will everyone dress up? I don't want to turn up, they're all in jeans and T-shirts. And I'm standing there as little Bo Peep. 
Yeah, I do want a drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big one. <laughs> Actually, just fill up this bonnet. <laughs> That's why when someone has a fancy dress party now, they sort of spoil it, don't they? They put a bit of a threat on the invite, don't they? Like, it always says, fancy dress compulsory. You must dress up. No admittance without fancy dress. Just dress up and have a laugh, you miserable bastard. What's the matter? Once in your life, can't you join the rest of us? Have a bit of fun. Oh, you think you're so fucking special, don't you? <laughs> We're just trying to grab a few fleeting moments of happiness in this miserable existence we laughingly call life. And you, you're too fucking special. Big for your boots, aren't you? You're just a wanker. A wanker and an asshole and a knobhead. You make me fucking sick, people like you. I can't... I'm, ugh, shit bollocks, wank, 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 wank. <laughs> I had a lot of food left over that night, I remember. <laughs> yeah. I got a bit carried away. And some people really do care, don't they? Like David Cameron, he cares, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah, he cares so much he had a wind turbine fitted on his house. And that provides enough energy to power his crazy ideas machine. <laughs> It's like a ticker tape in the kitchen. Hug a hoodie. Like it, like it, yeah. <laughs> Money trees. Hmm. <laughs> like I say, I do care. I've got friends of mine who are really into it. They say, you don't care. One of them said, he said, you still, you still drive to the supermarket. I said, how else am I supposed to get there? He said, take the bus. I said, you get stabbed on the bus. <laughs> he said, keep your mouth shut. And I've been getting the train a lot. A lot of the gigs, I get the train, I get the train up and down the country. And I'm retarded, I'm really shocked at the state of the, of the trains in this country. You know, I mean, half the trains I get, I would say at least half the trains I get, you still can't flush the toilet when the train's at the station. I think that's incredible. It's 2008, and we're still crapping on the track. <laughs> with all the technology we've got, they can't come up with a toilet that can be used whenever's necessary. You know? <laughs> the moment, it's not a toilet, is it? It's a hole in a train. You don't have this problem on planes or coaches. Yeah. I've never driven up the M1 behind a coach and gone, oh, no! <laughs> oh, that's his squall, oh, Jesus! <laughs> Getting out of this lane. It's <laughs> <That is> disgusting. <laughs> I mean, maybe they could get someone to help them with this, you know? Maybe get the iPod guys. Yeah, the iPod guys. Because they took something that was really bulky and inconvenient, didn't they? Your record collection. You used to take up an entire wall in your house and they shrunk it down. Vroom. Little iPod. Wow. <laughs> or the mini chicken Kiev guys. <gasps> <laughs> Where were their minds at? <laughs> they were fractal, man. Because no one wanted to eat chicken Kiev, did they? Oh, don't want that sloshing around inside me. <laughs> A little one. Oh, yeah. I could be tempted. <laughs> Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Lot better than my idea. Massive chicken Kievs. <laughs> I went the other way. <laughs> they were huge. You could stand on them. <laughs> that was a great episode of The Dragon's Den. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of this, guys? I love that show. That's my, I mean, my favourite show on television. That is, I love, you know, people come with their business ideas and they say it's shit, piss off. <laughs> Which I don't think they should do. I don't think they should. I think they should let most of the ideas through. Because if you go in the shops, right, there's so much weird, nonsensical shit for sale. People will pretty much buy anything, won't they? You know? I mean, someone somewhere thought it was a great idea to put little castles in goldfish bowls. How nuts is that? <laughs> if you went on the Dragon's Den and said, yeah, it's a little castle, we put it in with the goldfish. You know? <laughs> What? What have goldfish got to do with castles? <laughs> That's like putting an anchor in a rabbit hutch. What's the matter with you? <laughs> but I bet if you sold them, I bet if you sold them in pet shops, you'd say, what's that? Uh, it's an anchor for your rabbit. I'll have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> he loves that anchor. <laughs> you try to take it off and have your hand off. Or pebble dashing. You're on the Dragon's Den, so I've got this idea. You know all your lovely brickwork? We're going to cover it in cement and stones. <laughs> so your house looks shit. 
But it does have an upside. You don't get burgled. Do you? <laughs> People think you've got fuck all. <laughs> Argos. I like to go in there with the idea for Argos, right? I've got this idea for a shop that's got everything in it, but you're not allowed to see it. <laughs> It's all out the back. <laughs> we don't trust you. <laughs> and also, we can employ shy people. Yeah. <laughs> they don't ask for pay rises. <laughs> I've got a couple of ideas for Dragons then. One idea. I think it's a definite go. It's a definite money spin of this. You know, people have like these light hearted, amusing, you know, wacky ties. I'd like to come up with a range of sad ties. <laughs> ties that make you go, oh. <laughs> like you meet someone who's got one of those ties and go, no, actually, I think I'm just going to go home. <laughs> yeah. You have a picture on the front, maybe like Gail Porter pointing at her head, going, mm. <laughs> It's been on the front of every magazine. Put it on a tie. <laughs> She'll make a few quid. A nurse looking in her pay packet. <laughs> A three-legged dog. <laughs> See, that got you already, hasn't it? <laughs> and you could have, like, matching tie and socks. Yeah. So, on the tie, you have, like, an empty bird's nest. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> you're ahead of me, aren't you? <laughs> a little baby bird on his back, like that. <laughs> he can't fly yet. And on this sock, a hungry cat. <laughs> I've, got, I've got loads of ideas for the show, you know? I get them from all sorts of things. Like, you know, I mean, it's well documented at the moment, isn't it? A lot of women are drinking a lot more than they used to, aren't they? Women, would you agree with that? I say women are drinking a lot more. A hell of a lot more. Yeah. 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 And they are. And, and, and frequently, when I, 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 where I live, I frequently see women walking home at night, crying, Carrying their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting the prime original function of shoes, which is a barrier between dog shit and your socks, isn't it? <laughs> and I thought, obviously, women's shoe design hasn't caught up with the current trend for girls getting absolutely shit faced. <laughs> we need a new shoe, like a lady's drinking stiletto. A hydraulic stiletto. <laughs> and the more you drink, it comes down like that. <laughs> and then it opens out. <laughs> it's like going home on bare feet, like that. <sighs> <laughs> you luxury runs, a little rabbit ears come out. <laughs> But the holy grail for that show, Dragon's Den, has got to be a cure for baldness. They had a cure for baldness, they'd be chucking the money at you. I'd like to go in there and wind them up and say, yeah, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a cure for baldness. Yeah, very simple, very simple. And they go, oh, what is that? Yeah, very easy. You know what you need to do? Just do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, you've got to concentrate, obviously, you know. <laughs> If you're on a pier, blimey, cool. <laughs> oh, it's windy out today, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's all got in my eyes. Oh. <sighs> but, yeah. <laughs> or if you're playing tennis. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I go over there, my hair stays over there, partners get suspicious, aren't they? They think his hair's centrifugally incorrect. <laughs> That's another one of those punchlines you don't get every day, isn't it? <sighs> <sighs> I can see a few people looking at me as if to say, how long is this going on for? <laughs> I can't believe you can go on this thing. <sighs> for a while. <sighs> <sighs> That's the funny bit, really, isn't it? That. <laughs> Rest of it's bollocks, but that bit is like... <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to push it, but, you know, it is. <laughs> and you could have loads of different hairstyles, couldn't you? Perm. 
and just shake it out. <laughs> Said to party. <laughs> Put a marigold glove on, you're a blonde. <laughs> Not suitable for the older gentleman, obviously, because of arthritis. Ah. <laughs> just snatch his fingers off with a club hammer. Of course, the main enemy of it is cramp, but, uh, uh. <laughs> How's my hair? Looking good? Yeah. <sighs> but uh, I went off, I went off uh, subject a bit there. I was talking about the environment, wasn't I? I talking about the environment. Didn't, didn't quite solve that riddle, you know. <laughs> no, I think, actually, the reason some people care and some people don't is that some people see the planet as something they have to be grateful for, thankful for, they should nurture and care for it. And other people see the planet as something you stand on. Really? <laughs> Well, I'm just standing on it. I'll stand on something else if you've got it. You, know? <laughs> you give me something, I'll stand on it, mate. <laughs> stand on fucking anything, I don't care. And also, I've got young children. That's another reason I care. And I'm worried when they grow up and the planet's knackered, firstly, they're not going to move out. <laughs> and also, they'll blame me, won't they? They'll blame, they'll, blame the, they'll blame our generation, but also they'll blame... The, people tend to blame their parents for a lot of their problems in their life, don't they? You know, people tend to blame... You know, I think the reason I haven't got a lot of self-confidence was, you know, I don't think I got enough praise as a child. And I always think, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't stick twiglets up your ass. Hey. <laughs> Look on the bright side. When I know I've already got problems, I'll have problems with my, my eldest daughter when she grows up, because I made a big mistake with her when she was young, because I showed her the film Finding Nemo way too early in life, way too I put it on when she was two and a half. I thought, brilliant, I'll put that on, I'll have a couple of hours going... <laughs> a minute into the film, she's screaming her head off, going, Daddy, turn it off, turn it off, he's lost his mummy, he's lost his mummy, turn it off. And that's what happens. You've seen Finding Nemo. The beginning of the film, right? The beginning of the film, the first minute of the film, his mum, right, gets eaten. <laughs> like a big fish, like a barracuda kind of. Eats his mum and then, and then all his brothers and sisters. Decimates his entire family. So I thought, oh, maybe it's not suitable for kids her age. Yeah? <laughs> I thought I'd look on the back of the DVD. He might say something like, you're not suitable for under fires. I got the DVD. On the back, all it says is, contains mild peril. Mum, at any age, that's not great, is it? You know, it's not. I mean, I might as well have put Scarface on. <laughs> Just had Al Pacino going, <laughs> my <little> fucking cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> And at least on the back of Scarface, they warn you, don't they? They warn you on the back of... You look on the back of Scarface, it says, contains frequent bloody violence, hard drug use, very strong language, sex, nudity. Might as well say there's a bit of poo in there as well. <laughs> there's an elephant with a hard on. <laughs> don't watch this film if you're nice. <laughs> Some of the manners are disgraceful. <laughs> No-one says please or thank you. Mr. Pacino eats his dessert with a soup spoon. <laughs> the fragile world of etiquette has entirely collapsed in this nightmarish drug-dealing vision. <laughs> Got a bit carried away again there, didn't I? <laughs> but I thought, what does mild peril mean, anyway? To me, mild peril would be going to the dry cleaners without a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, will I get my trousers? Immediately. <laughs> you have to wait like a minute. <laughs> while they get that big book out. You know, I don't know what that achieves, but... You know. Or another mild peril would be not washing fruit, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in all day. I'll take the risk. <laughs> Eating a whole trifle, then driving. Ha-ha! <laughs> Born to be wise. <laughs> mm. oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Mm. Mm. And I'll never get invited back. <laughs> oh, yeah, the looks on their faces when I picked up that trifle. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm off. <sighs> Opening a dented can of beer near a bride. 
investigating a quivering bush. Ooh. <laughs> What's going on in there? The worst that could happen is you get chased by a masturbating tramp, isn't it? <laughs> and let's face it, that's an anecdote we'd all like to have. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the time I was chased by a masturbating tramp? <laughs> chased me hither and thither. <laughs> Determined little bugger he was. <laughs> Purplest thing I've seen in my life, really was. <laughs> Much the colour of this Merlot. <laughs> Your Majesty, weren't <right> there? <laughs> no, it's disgraceful. Walt Disney would be turning in his grave, wouldn't he? He'd be horrified if he knew what was going on. If he was in a grave, because somebody, somebody pointed out to me a while back. Apparently, there's. Have you ever heard this rumour on the internet that he, he, Walt Disney wasn't buried? Have you heard this? Yeah? yeah. It was cryogenically frozen. There's this rumour going around that when he died, instead of burying him, they chopped his head off, right? And then they froze it on the off chance that one day in the future they'll be able to bring frozen heads back to life. <laughs> Just as it works with peas. <laughs> I like the idea they chopped the head off. They must say, yeah, well, if we can bring a frozen head, if we can bring a frozen head back to life, growing another body, piece of piss. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about just growing another body. I imagine the bloke who runs a cryogenic centre has got loads of sovereign rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, just grow another body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not so we can get more in the fridge. <laughs> and if I was going to get frozen, I want to be frozen pretty much straight away. So fresh. I'd want to be frozen fresh as soon as I died. I imagine on his deathbed, Walt Disney had like a circular saw just above his neck. <laughs> and a bloke in some overalls. Like that, yeah. How are you feeling, all right? Can you? Can I go for a piss? That's one of those things you see on the internet, you know, if you noodle around. I spend quite a lot of time on the internet. I do. No, I don't look at porn, never look at porn, because you know, people always have seen that. But I never... What I do is I look for porn that isn't there. I try to think out little appetites little weaknesses people may have and see if they're catered for. Yeah. <laughs> like the other day, I put in busty foster mums. <laughs> Google came back and said, did you mean busy foster mums? <laughs> no, I fucking didn't. <laughs> I mean, busty mums are great big tits, please. <laughs> I typed in flu sex, you know. I thought... Some people might like, like watching people who've got the flu <laughs> having sex. <laughs> oh, I feel bloody awful. <laughs> oh. Do we have to do this? <laughs> I've got a temperature of 104. <laughs> An erection could kill me. <laughs> but it's not there, there's nothing there. So, in a way, it makes me feel like the world's a better place than I thought it might be. Yeah? <laughs> I put in anal barnacle. Heavy metal band from Lincolnshire. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're in. <laughs> but the real thing I'm into on the internet is online gambling. I love that. I love it. Oh, I love it. You know, the other day I bought a mattress on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> I phoned the guy up. I said, What about this stain? He said, What stain? I said, The big one. Yeah. The one that looks like a tramp's exploded, that one. <laughs> or you've been nursing a smurf with malaria. <laughs> Did the predator have his honeymoon on this mattress? <laughs> you've been making mermaid porn. It's like an experiment with puppies and a cappuccino machine. <laughs> Maybe Humpty Dumpty did exist. He was a giant egg and he landed on your fucking mattress. <laughs> and the boat said, come on, mate, it's not that bad, is it? I said, no, you're probably right, actually. Actually, so it's just a bit of fluff. <laughs> Sorry about that. And that proves two things. Firstly, you don't necessarily need a punchline. <laughs> Secondly, I'm one of those people, you know some people, their personalities change when they get behind a wheel of a car. I'm like that with a phone. 
I get a phone in my hand, I get this real urge to bollock people. <laughs> it's terrible. You know, I, just, I just get carried away. You know? For example, a while back I was at home. I was quite busy, to be fair to me. I was fairly busy. Because I remember I was, I was watching the Grand Prix, chewing a Rolo, and putting my keys on a different fob. You know, so... <laughs> I was snowed under. <laughs> I was at stress levels, probably only known by fighter pilots. Goes. I thought, what am I, a fucking octopus? <laughs> so I pick it up. The bloke said, is Dave there? I said, there's no Dave here. He went, ah, oh, must be a wrong number. And he put the phone down on me! <laughs> I thought, I'm not having that! <laughs> so I dialed 14713. But he was engaged. Yeah. Makes nice. sense, got through to Dave. <laughs> so I dialed five and I waited. <laughs> And eventually I got through and he said, who's there? I said, oh, don't you remember me? I'm the bloke who's got nothing better to do than sit around his house all day long, waiting for some chubby-fingered idiot like you <laughs> who can't remember a simple set of numbers. And I'll slam the phone down. Oh, that's not good. But after a couple of minutes, it wore off. So I found him again. <laughs> this time I didn't say anything, you know. I just giggled. <laughs> Good, not as good as the first time. You know? So I phoned him again. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, ended up painting a community centre. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned something. Obviously, try to control your temper. Always try to control your temper. And always wash your brushes and put your ladders away. <laughs> That's a bit of advice that will serve you well in life. And also, I don't, I don't get angry now. If I get a wrong number, I don't get angry. No. What I do, and you should do this, it's great, is I don't let on it's a wrong number. <laughs> so someone phones up. I go, hello? They go, is Mandy there? Mandy? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go and get her. <laughs> OK, just a sec. OK, bye. <laughs> Just come in. OK. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Some wanker. <laughs> what have I told you? Don't wear your shoes in the house. <laughs> oh. Put the special slippers on. <laughs> I give you chance after chance. <laughs> and you just keep fucking up. <laughs> She's just changing her shoes. <laughs> Fantastic. It's the most fun you can have in your own home, guaranteed. <laughs> uh, so, what time is it? I like doing a bit of topical stuff. Um, <laughs> just in the moment, I was there. No, really, what time was it? <laughs> no, because, you know, what, what basically the problem is, I mean, obviously, I, I, I haven't got a watch, you know. And the reason I haven't got a watch is I only remember that I need to buy a watch at this point in the show every night. It's a bit like, you know when you need a new pillow? You only think about it as you're going to bed, don't you? You go, this pillow, shit, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sick of it. I can't have a decent night's sleep in bloody months. Oh, 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 oh. Of course, eventually you get to sleep, don't you? You get to sleep. Yeah, the next day you wake up, totally forget about it. Go to bed that night. Oh! <laughs> that goes on for years. <laughs> Did you end up with a little pile of dust and feathers? <laughs> Gotta get a pillow. Gotta get a pillow. Get a compass and scratch the word pillow in your arm. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I've got to get a pillow. <laughs> I mean, some people use post-its. We're all different, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but I mean, the reason, reason, reason I said, also, I don't wear a watch is because what a lot of comics do is they try to sort of look at their watch after they've done a joke. So they do a joke and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. It's really tricky if you need those two buttons to look at the time. Oh. <laughs> you just don't want to see performers doing that. You wouldn't want to see, like, the legendary Jimi Hendrix who's in the middle of one of his guitar solos. His amazing guitar solo's going... <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> or the Royal Ballet. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Hurry up and die, you bitch. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, I mean pen. <laughs> Cheers. Just about reached me. Um, <laughs> that was a real village cricket one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that just tapped the rope, didn't it? Just like... <laughs> I was amazed at that, you know, when people start. Sometimes people start rounds of applause and they lose confidence. You know, they go, oh, no one else joins in. <laughs> and sometimes they must think, well, it's just a three clap joke, that is, mate. <laughs> That's your lot. <laughs> Got a bit of a character in. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, I'm having a character in the room. Wee! You know those people who say, you know, oh, you've got to meet my mate, he's a right character. Ooh. <laughs> you know, my advice is don't get your hopes up. <laughs> no. What they mean, when they say their mate's a bit of a character, what they mean is when you're not looking, you put his cock in your pint. <laughs> That's what passes for character in this, in this country. No, it's actually one of the things about this job. People assume you must have an amazing memory to remember all well, that material. You must have an amazing memory. It'd be great if I did. Much better show. Um, <laughs> I've got a terrible memory, dreadful memory. And I forget stuff I've known all my life. It just disappears. It just goes, you know? you know. I'll give an example. I was a while back. I was with a different partner, a different partner, a girlfriend at the time. And I was on my way to the swimming baths. And I realised I'd forgotten my goggles. Right? And that's not it. <laughs> So that proves I haven't got a very good memory. Oh, I've got loads of stories like that. <laughs> no, so I went home and I noticed the front door was slightly open. I thought, that's odd. That's weird. Then I heard this noise coming from upstairs. I went upstairs to investigate. I saw something that chilled me to my very marrow. Because right? I saw that my girlfriend at the time was having sex with one of my oldest friends. Someone I've known since I was nine years old. But the worst thing was, I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> Drives you mad, doesn't it? I said, Bloody know this. Oh. I was having trouble concentrating. She was making all these weird noises I hadn't heard before. <laughs> and eventually I remembered it. The trouble was, I was so relieved to remember it, when I shouted it out, it sounded like I was really pleased to see him. <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> Well, I say I remembered it. She shouted out a couple of seconds before me. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis! <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> it was a very uncomfortable moment, as you can imagine. We, we went downstairs and she said, look, Sean, you might as well know. You didn't know, you didn't have any idea, but I've been having an affair with Dennis for a while now and our relationship's kind of over and you, you found out this way, it's a shame. You didn't have a clue, but now you have, so there we go. And I just said the first thing that came into my head, which was, uh, have you seen my goggles? <laughs> Because she always knew where stuff was. <laughs> Keys over there. Can't kind of miss her, really. But, um, I had two choices, really. I thought I could either let her know it hurt me and I'm affected, or I could go on the offensive. And I said, no, no, I tell her, I thought I'm going to go, I'm going to stand up for myself. I said, OK, girl, you think you can shock me? There's a couple of things you didn't know about me. Oh, yeah. Remember that time I went up in the attic? I was supposed to insulate the loft. <laughs> I didn't bother. I just sat up there for hours doing nothing. <laughs> Imagine the heat we lost. <laughs> but I said another thing you didn't know about me. All these years we lived together, you never once realised that I am... The Riddler! <laughs> ah! Oh, yes! Have I got a surprise for you? Thanks. 
Don't worry, I'm not the Riddler, you're not in any danger. You know? <laughs> Just lucky I had it on that day. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll move this, you can see better. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. What? <laughs> nice executive toys. Good, that's a stitch back, that's a heckle. It also shows she's been paying attention. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm, I'm certain there's a sweat patch. I'd be amazed if there wasn't. Basically, I'd be a robot if there wasn't a sweat patch. <laughs> I, I did want to take it off earlier, but I thought, oh, you know, you know it's probably a closer. I was fucking boiling, actually. <laughs> I'm glad it's gone down well. Glad you like it. <laughs> it's one of those jokes, if it doesn't go down well, it's quite difficult to move on from. <laughs> so, anyway... <laughs> what's been going on with the Diana inquiry? <laughs> but no need tonight. <laughs> No, it doesn't always work, it doesn't always work. No, I do have nights where people go, what are you doing? <laughs> You're an idiot. And I can't really argue with them, can I? Yeah. No, I actually, uh, some of you noticed I might have got myself in shape for the tour, yeah. <laughs> I actually had to have my penis shrunk. Because <laughs> the original one was too intimidating. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. No, I'm glad you like it. Nice. <laughs> Any questions at all? <laughs> How big is it? Well, what you want to do is you want to get, like, a slide rule and measure the distance from me and do that. It's, it's, it's that big. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the most fascinating debates ever witnessed on a London stage. <laughs> it's very rare you get to do knob gags about your knob, which people can see, isn't it? <laughs> I'm breaking new ground, in a way. <laughs> How long have I been the Riddler? I'm not the Riddler. <laughs> Is that the problem? Do you all feel like you're in danger? <laughs> I'm not trying to take over London <laughs> with my wicked riddles. I don't know how he actually caused any problems with his riddles. <laughs> Just left some people uncertain of their address. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and I can hear you saying it. Um, to be honest, this is the only time in my life I ever feel truly comfortable and happy. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's time to leave the stage with some dignity. Um, <laughs> really, I should go before I get an erection. Um, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't notice, but I'd feel bad. <laughs> but I'll just muster my bits and pieces. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. You've been a fantastic crowd. I hope you enjoyed the show. I shall see you again sometime. Thank you very much. Good night. Do you think I came out too soon? I was, just, I was just worried. If I waited to do my trousers up and my coat, you know, they might have stopped. Sometimes the back of my head doesn't even clear the stage. It's like that. <laughs> as, I was, as I was walking along there, I was thinking to myself, you know there's that fashion for young men to wear their trousers quite low? <laughs> Taking it to new levels. <laughs> you know, Norm, I think we've seen enough. I think you've seen enough, you know. <laughs> oh. oh, we've got some... Uh, no, thank you very much for that. I'm glad you enjoyed, enjoyed the show. I've, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed touring as well. I have enjoyed touring. I've been doing other stuff recently. I'm just actually working on a new, uh, new telly show, which is coming out quite soon. It's a lifestyle show. It's a great idea. The idea is... The idea is get a couple of straight guys, go around the gay guy's house and just kind of sort his life out. You know? <laughs> Bleed the radiators. Lag the boiler, little things like that. <laughs> Stink out the toilet, you know, John. 
Give me a few tips. Don't stand like that. No. <laughs> Your hands in your pockets. <laughs> you need a bigger dog. <laughs> Get socks out of the laundry bin. Two more days out of them. <laughs> and I think I'd be the perfect man for that job. I really do. I really do. Because uh, I know this costume suggests otherwise. <laughs> but I'm one of the straightest men in Britain. I really am. Last Christmas, I put all my presents on Christmas Eve. Yeah. From a petrol station. <laughs> I'll never forget the looks on everyone's face as they open their barbecue fuel. Oh. <laughs> Do you keep a receipt? No. <laughs> no. I am, I'm incredible. I don't really understand campness. I always found campness a bit confusing. I don't see how your sexuality can affect your voice. I mean, I really like bondage. I don't mumble all the time. <laughs> all right, mate. All right. Yeah. I had a right good tie up last night. Yeah. No, I'm very, very, very straight. I could suck a cock. It wouldn't bother me at all. <laughs> I mean, much worse things at football matches. Much worse things. <laughs> if you've had a pie at a football match, a cock could be a treat. <laughs> at least you know what's in it. <laughs> no, if they offered you a choice, you want the cock or the pie? I'll have the cock, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Can you put it in? I don't want to touch it. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no, I've no problem with that. My problem would come when there'd be a man attached to it. <laughs> and I look up and he's got a beard and a pipe and he's going, go on, Sean, shock it, Sean. <laughs> come by, come by. <laughs> and people say to me, well, what about those fragrant lady boys? You've got those very feminine, fragrant lady boys, they've got long hair, they've got beautiful breasts, they're very, they're very fragrant and feminine. And I say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how feminine they are. When they come, they still go, oh! did a spot there, son. Yeah. <laughs> I'd imagine it's the same even if they've had the, had the full operation, you know? Cos, yeah, you know, you can't change the voice, can you? you know? They had the... <laughs> I don't know what they do, they make some kind of pocket, don't they? <laughs> I know one thing, I definitely don't want to look. <laughs> I imagine it looks like a squirrel shot with a magnum. <laughs> Just a wound with some fur around the edge. Huh? I'm going to leave you that image racing through your minds. <laughs> You're a fantastic crowd. Thank you very much. And good night. Thank you. Go now. <laughs>